So they ended up going for the same leads, the Rayquaza and the Celesteela. And like I said in the beginning, this gives Graham a choice. Do I fake out the Rayquaza or do I fake out the Celesteela? For Wolf, it doesn't really matter either way because if he fakes out the Rayquaza, the Celesteela can either set up a Leech Seed or go straight for a Heavy Slam. If they fake out the Celesteela, the Rayquaza can go straight for a Dragon Ascent and get a knockout on the Metachamp, which has been a threat to his Celesteela and his Incineroar. In turn one, Graham faked out the Celesteela. The Rayquaza didn't Mega Evolve, but it still attacked with Dragon Ascent. And in this game, Wolf is just going to straight out Mega Evolve. Not too worried about keeping the weather in his favor or under control in the future. He'll have to switch out if the Kyogre comes in if he wants weather back in his control. But it's not too much of a big deal um, right now at the beginning of the game. Okay, and there's no fake out, so there's no fake out. So Graham went straight for the attack. I don't know why he did that, but Wolf kept his game plan from game one versus Graham's team. He uh, was going to attack with both regardless, and this time he mega evolved. Last time he didn't, maybe Graham thought he wasn't going to mega evolve, and so he was gonna go straight for an attack so he'd be faster. Who knows? But Wolf goes straight for the attack, and this is going to let him get an easy knockout onto the Metachamp. It has no chance, didn't even get a chance to attack, it's just off the field, which is great for Wolf. A stellar first turn picking up a knockout. And then Lunala goes for a Tailwind. That speed control is very important for Graham's team, as this Rayquaza is faster than everything on his team. And Celestia goes straight for the Heavy Slam. So that's good because what that does is break the Shadow Shield, which is an ability that moves to half damage when you're at full health. So it breaks the Shadow Shield, which makes it so Lunala is going to start taking the damage that it would have. So this is almost an exact like copy of, of Game 1 because it played out the same way except for... Um, it wasn't Celesteela wasn't able to attack. So now it's the same conundrum. Celesteela can wide guard, or they can double into Rayquaza, or double into the Celesteela, or Wolf can switch out into something else. Graham doesn't Graham just has to choose whether he has to call the wide guard or make the attack. Wolf has to choose what he wants to do. Do you see why Wolf's in control right here? Because Graham has to play around Wolf's Celesteela. Celesteela has a wide guard, which shuts down Graham's Kyogre. That's why Wolf has been trying so hard to make sure that this thing is safe from the Metacham. He's, even though he doesn't have the speed and he doesn't have um, the that tailwind on his side he still has full control of the board right now because he can just wide guard he can just switch he gets to do what he wants Graham has to guess so he goes for the same turn turn he did wide so switching out Incineroar and then I think he wide guards here as well yep and wide guard so the first three turns in game three have been the exact same as game one. This time Graham's deciding to save the Z move for a later time. That way he can maybe pick up the um, Rayquaza. But see, so this is what could have happened in game one where he goes for, he switches out, goes for the wide guard. And Sinoror just eats the living daylights, man. It didn't even touch it. It just like was like, like got a little tickled from this Moonguys beam and Wolf is just stalling out these Tailwind turns and taking zero damage from these Pokemon. He's making a very safe play, switching out the Rayquaza, bringing in the Incineroar, 
knowing that it's just not going to go down even if they double into it. The Tapu Koko can be threatening to Wolf because the Tapu Koko is the only thing that can take out the Celestila in one shot. So Wolf going for the Wide Guard again, just making sure that there is no way that this Kyogre can bring down this Incineroar. And Incineroar is just free to attack without any worry about uh, Water Spouts and Origin Pulses. So now here's here's a pivot. I think this is an important turn to highlight because Wolf has a choice here. This is a choice that players have to make, and this is where practice and intelligence comes in. He can wide guard. He can either wide guard here and let Incineroar do more damage or switch out Incineroar, or he can just let Incin or he can switch out Incineroar, switch out Celesteela, or why or switch out Celesteela, let Incineroar go down. So there's a couple choices that Wolf can make here. There is one, I'll tell you right now, there is one out of all those that is the best choice to make for Wolf's game plan. Because right here he could potentially lose two Pokemon, Celesteela to the Coco, Incineroar to the Kyogre. And depending on what he chooses here, could, could choose whether or not whether he gets an upper hand in this game. So Incineroar does come back, Rayquaza comes in, Airlock comes on, which gets rid of all the weather and weakens electric type attacks. Celestia goes for the wide guard. So this is why this is why this was the best move. You'll see right here. So if if Tapu Koko had gone for a wild charge. Celesteela would have been able to survive because airlock makes it so that super effective attacks to flying types are half damage. So Celesteela would have been able to attack, uh, would, have, would have lived to see another day even if it had gone for wild charge. That's why it, that was a smart move. And now Wolf is in a position to be able to drag an ascent or icy wind and do some damage to this Rayquaza or to this Tapu Koko and Celesteela has the option to either wide guard, heavy slam or switch out. So while while you're watching this, I hope you've been thinking in your head what you would do and then seeing what Wolf would do and then comparing why his move may have been better or worse than yours. So Coco goes for the Electro Web to get the speed control on the Rayquaza. That way the Kyogre may potentially be faster. But he didn't protect. So Wolf just went for the safe play knowing that he couldn't get knocked out by the Coco and just went for the damage on the Kyogre. He doesn't want the Kyogre to be able to stay on the field at full health. He's not afraid of the Tapu Coco. That's another, that's another thing to highlight there. The Coco was not the threat, it was the Kyogre. So he prioritized what the threat was to his team. If he had prioritized the Coco and let the Kyogre just have its way, that Water Spout could have knocked out Celesteela, possibly. Now he's in a position to Dragon Ascent again, Extreme Speed the Coco. He's, he can pick up a knockout here. No matter really what he wants, no matter what he does, he can get a knockout which will put him up even another Pokemon. And he still hasn't even revealed his last one yet. Wolf has been commanding this game through safe switches, prioritizing the threat on the field, and positioning his Pokemon with the checks and counters and the resistances that he has to beat Graham's team. So he switches out Rayquaza there. I'm assuming to reset the speed because it had been it had been uh, weakened from the from the um, Electro Web, so it's been slower. And so he just switched it out so that he could keep the we could reset the speed and then 
Coco ended up going down there, but that's okay because now he can get a free switch in back to his Rayquaza. It'll be max speed and it can knock out the Kyogre and start doing damage on the Lunala. Okay, so this is going to the final final turns. Wolf has had full command of this game. You'll notice his Incineroar is still in the back. So what he could do is knock out the Kyogre. That way it gets rid of the Incineroar, the threat to the Incineroar, and then there's no way Lunala is beating Incineroar. Unless it has some crazy move. So either way here, Graham is in a very tight spot wolf has set up his team on the board to just run over his team and his win condition is this incineroar versus the lunala so let's so let's see what wolf does Okay, Kyogre goes for the Protect, which is okay. Not too bad. Like I said, he wants to get rid of the Kyogre so that the Incineroar can just clean clean up the game. Graham goes for the Lunalium Z. Now, he, what he really needs here is he needs the Rayquaza to go down. If the Rayquaza goes down, he still has a chance to win the game because then he can pick up the... Um, he can pick up the Celesteela the next turn if you, I think, because it's weak enough, and then Kyogre can do damage onto the Incineroar and potentially win. So he needs this to KO. But Wolf's Rayquaza is a very specially bulky type, so it won't pick up the knockout. So even from that, even with some damage, it won't pick up the knockout. He still lives with 54 health. Heavy Slam goes out onto the Lunala. At a plus one attack, it's going to do major damage. Yeah, Celestia is going to get some HP back from leftovers. And this game is pretty much done. Unless Kyogre gets a double protect here and Lunala picks up the Rayquaza, this game is done. Wolf can pick up the Kyogre. He can even just get the, he he can even just get the Heavy Slam knockout on the Lunala. Doesn't even need his Incineroar at the end because he just set up his team to win. See, so he went for the double protect, didn't get it luckily for Wolf. Dragon Ascent will come out, knock out the Kyogre, and then Graham will, and then Graham's Lunala will go down to the heavy slam from Wolf as Celesteela. The game was over. The game was over. They shake hands, which is good sportsmanship on them. Shake hands. Commanding win for Wolf. And that is game two. And Wolf won the North American International Champion two game set. I think the turn that really mattered the most for Wolf here that helped him. So he got some damage. He got some damage onto the Kyogre right about here. And then this turn where he switched out this one, where he switched out his his uh, Rayquaza to the Tapu Koko, I think this is what really helped him win the game because it made sure that his Rayquaza, which was going to be more important to the team at this point in the game than Tapu Koko, would be at max speed to be able to do the damage it needed to. Even if the Coco didn't go down there, it would have been a better move because then he could have still got rid of the Kyogre and the Heavy Slam 
still could have got rid of the Tapacoco or the Celestila could have gone down and then he gets a free switch into Rayquaza. Either way, he's getting a free switch in back into his Rayquaza. And that's what really helped him win the game. So I would say that is the pivotal point of the match that Wolf took full command and got rid of everything he needed to so that his team could be fully set up to win the second game. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it. Hopefully this helped. I'm not too used to doing this, so hopefully as I explain this more, they get better and easier to understand. Uh, let me know what you thought. Let me know if I need to like slow down or if there's some things that I didn't cover very well so I can try to be better in the future. Uh, and I leave a like and maybe subscribe if you like what you saw so you don't miss more games like this. Okay, thank you for watching everybody. Hope I helped and I hope you have a good rest of your day.